<clears throat> so for these kinds of questions regarding confidentiality, you can typically smell them coming. And you don't have to memorize, you know, saved the day or anything. It's just, it should be, assuming you have a good enough compass on the smells fishy, uh, you don't need to memorize saved. Um, let's just go through some examples of saved. Um, exceptions to confidentiality. Someone goes into your uh, office uh, and you say, hey, how you doing? And, and he says, feeling fantastic. Going to get my blood pressure checked. Going to have a nice burger. Going to kill everyone at Union Station. Going to go home. That's, that's when you are no longer uh, obligated to stay confidential because this person says he's going to go kill everybody. And um, you have to remember you have this whole do no harm thing. Obviously, that typically refers to the patient, but you can also think about your role in the society in general and how that could be um, affected. I mean, not just your position, but also how society can be affected by you letting someone go out and kill everyone or harm themselves. So you see this often in psychiatric examples where you have a patient uh, who says, hey, I'm not feeling so hot, and the psychiatrist is always going to ask, any thoughts of self-harm? And if the person says yes, then you do an emergency petition, and you see this all the time. Abuse. Huge. Child abuse. Elderly abuse. And it's different from spousal abuse. So spousal abuse, they'll keep asking you, oh, well, you have to report it. They have to report it. And in this case, and in most cases of spousal abuse, you don't have to report it. The idea is that adults are... They have the physical wherewithal, they have the mental wherewithal, they have the blah, blah, blah wherewithal to deal with their problems um, that a child, you know, mentally they're not there like an adult, physically they're not there like an adult, or the elderly. You know, physically they're not there, you know, if you're a million years old, you know, what if you have dementia or something? When it comes to the children, when it comes to elderly, they love testing you. On, do you treat them the same as adults? The answer is no. Adults, you don't have to report. Kids and the elderly, 100%. All right. You can't let epileptic people, narcoleptics, you know, start uh, driving automobiles. Reportable diseases. Uh, someone with Ebola. Oh, yeah. Okay. Someone with Ebola or something. Um, someone with... Uh, with HIV, who's like, yeah, I'm not going to tell my partners. Mm, mm, yeah. You know, someone with TB or something. Someone with, you know, let's say now everyone's got like Corona or something. Everyone's freaking out. You know, would Corona, uh, if we weren't in this, you know, national state of emergency, would that be forced to be revealed? Uh, I don't know. But considering all the hoopla that's going on around it, I would say that if you didn't report someone to have coronavirus now, you would be in big trouble. This is an example where confidentiality does not have to be um, um, respected. And here's talking about a potential victims from harm, protecting them. For example, if someone says, hey, I'm going to go out and and kill my girlfriend, and you try and stop him or something, and it doesn't work. The guy is able to, or girl, is able to leave the the building and get out. If you have this person's phone number, or better yet, call the cops and, and tell them what's going on to save a potential victim from harm. So, <clears throat> again, suicide, homicide, you see it all the time in psychiatric patients. You say, hey, any thoughts of self-harm? Or if they say, I've had thoughts of taking my life, you do an emergency petition. You don't have to respect confidentiality there. Self-harm is likely. Steps can be taken to prevent it. Okay. Um, what else is going on? All right, that's it for this page.